Hello and welcome to World Talks here on TVP World with me, Ashim Kumar. Well, Donald Trump has declared victory in the U.S. presidential election. In fact, he's been getting congratulatory messages from leaders around the world, including Polish President Duda. But what does a Trump victory mean for Poland and the Central and Eastern European region? Well, to explore that, I am joined by Wojciech Przybyski. He's editor-in-chief, Visegrad Insight. Mr. Przybyski, uh, welcome. Hello. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Thanks for taking the time. So tell us, how do you see uh, Trump's win? in the context of uh, his, his policy towards Central and Eastern Europe and Poland in particular? Uh, Donald Trump has been known in his administration before as uh, uh, really big fans of Poland in particular. And uh, under his administration, we have seen uh, security and defense ramp up um, preparing the eastern flank. Um, so there isn't much worry uh, when it comes to the security and the focus on Central Eastern Europe, also because a number of those countries, with Poland leading um, in this domain, uh, actually fulfilling uh, the idea he has been uh, nurturing throughout the campaign of having all European countries paying more for the defence, for the collective uh, Western defence. Poland is leading in that domain, uh, spending and planning to spend nearly 5% of GDP. Uh, a number of other countries, like Estonia, are also um, uh, increasing their defence budgets, which is not yet caught up by a number of other bigger European countries in the West. And I think the differentiation of approach of the US administration towards those countries will be quite visible. This is uh, rather expected. Yes, well, you, you mentioned spending on, on NATO. Now, uh, Trump has, has very famously said that he wouldn't support countries uh, which didn't pay their fair share. I think we have, uh, we have the quote coming up uh, in just a second. Um, what do you make of that? Do you, I mean, how seriously do you take it? Is it just Trump bluster or is there something more meaningful behind that quote? Well, there are slogans from the campaign and there are policies of the administrations. Let's see who is sitting in the administration to make policy choices, policy decisions later on uh, throughout, the, throughout the term. Uh, one thing is uh, clear, that uh, Europe needs to take uh, defence more seriously. Um, not that it doesn't in its analytical approach and does not uh, understand the gravity of global tensions and situations. But a number of European countries not need to come together and find creative solutions, uh, even outside of EU and probably in the intergovernmental format, to be able to deliver what is needed today uh, in, in um, um, a rather grim global uh, situation of tensions in more countries joining, for instance, the war in Ukraine, like North Korea, to be able to deliver not just words and policy and diplomacy, but actual deeds on industry and economy that create altogether a defense posture. And I think uh, a lot will depend on, the, again, the, the ideas and the leaderships shown by many Central Eastern European countries, and a lot to be shown uh, during the upcoming EU presidency, when Poland will host uh, 27 countries uh, to make decisions and adjust policies in accordance and in, in correlation um, uh, with uh, our key transatlantic partners like US and, and, uh, and Canada and others of the West. Are you suggesting then that uh, President Trump would be a catalyst for that process to take place, a more cohesive Europe-wide uh, both defence and economic policy? I think what uh, we're waking up to see in Europe this uh, morning is uh, looking into how not just one country but all of Europe can actually move to a Titan Vendor 2.0, having uh, much more funding, much more coordinated approach. Yes, uh, because of the inevitability of the U.S. Uh, political decision, political direction, but also because of the realities, global realities on the ground uh, where, where America is just uh, reminding us of what, uh, what some 
difficult choices might be in the future. Understood. Now, uh, Donald Trump has faced criticism um, in the past for his relationship with President Orban of, of Hungary. Um, how would you characterize that relationship, and how do you think that's going to proceed now that Trump has declared victory? Uh, Mr. Orban has been useful to Donald Trump, and we've seen that on many occasions. But knowing that Mr. Trump is also very transactional in approach, I wonder if Mr. Orban can have anything else to offer uh, on the European turf. And certainly we know, because of his dependencies on uh, Chinese or Russian investments, he, he does not. Um, he does not also have a strong card uh, to uh, maneuver and to lead on, on, the, on the big European answers. So in that sense, uh, this relationship will uh, diminish uh, from the campaign mode to more of a reality check between a very small country and uh, a, a major global player. Understood. Now, just finally, in the last minute or so that we have left, uh, President Duda went to, uh, to the US in April and had a private meeting with Donald Trump. Um, he described it as a friendly meeting in a very pleasant atmosphere. What do you think uh, was being said? Were they laying the groundwork for a Trump victory in this election? <laughs> Uh, I have no idea what the former KGB uh, spy might be whispering to uh, 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 Western leaders, but, but, but for sure I can, I can say that uh, he had no good intentions. No, but in, in terms of a, a way forward, should Trump uh, win uh, a way forward in the relationship between Poland and the US? Oh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood and I heard Russia. But in terms of uh, President Duda, uh, we, we can only say that uh, it's an outgoing president and we will have a presidential campaign in Poland uh, where, uh, well, we'll see whoever wins and will become the president of Poland in the next year will definitely be uh, putting uh, a lot of emphasis on excellent relations that we have maintained between Poland and the U.S. so far. Well, we look forward to that continuing. Mr. Wojciech Przybyski, uh, Editor-in-Chief, is a great insight. Thank you very much for your insight and analysis. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that's all from us in this episode of World Talks. Don't go away. Lots more coming up in this very, very exciting day. Goodbye for now.